Hey everybody, this is Perch. What's an ash can? Well, um, you know, I, I've used this term for so long, I kind of thought it was pretty industry practice, but this question came up. I hear you talking about ash cans. What are ash cans? Does it have something to do with smoking? That, that's very that's very charming. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, that's a very charming thought about that question. I, I don't want to make fun of, uh, I'm, I'm not making fun of the, the questioner, but <laughs> it, it's, I don't know, there's something very innocent about um uh, assuming it has something to do with smoking. Anyway, um, let me work my way kind of back to front a little bit. An ash can, uh, these got very, I don't want to say popular, but you you heard a lot about them when Wizard was going on. And for a lot of people who really hadn't, uh, you know, had known what ash cans were, uh, Wizard Magazine, and I guess I should say there are plenty of people out there who don't know what Wizard Magazine is. Uh, Wizard Magazine was a uh, an industry journal. Uh, it's a news magazine that kind of covered comics. It became so popular that it was outselling most of the comics, uh, which is a, a fascinating kind of development in the uh, in the early 90s. And sometimes uh, Wizard Comics, uh, Wizard would come bagged uh, with an ash can, or you could send off for an ash can. And typically what they were using it for was to promote new comics. So if there was a new image comic coming out, there'd be a like a you know ash can one half issue or some it, it, for for a lack of any you know it was it was like a little preview comic it was a it was a trailer for a comic but ash cans could also be pretty cool because they would put original content in the ash can uh, the ash can was smaller uh, it was like not quite half comic size but it was it was a smaller uh, piece it was a real pain in the butt uh, if you're running a comic shop how you stored these you know you put them in a bag and a board but the uh, obsessive compulsive side of me always hated the way that looked. It was, it was just weird in there, but um, that's basically what the ash can was. Uh, it was, it was marketing. Um, and then in, so in, in 92, I want to say um, ash can, they were, they're like digest sized. And I think image was the one that, that started doing this. And as I mentioned, a wizard uh, was, was heavily using them and, and kind of everybody jumped into it. Dark horse did DC did, um, I, I want to say Marvel did, but I, I, I may, I may be questioning that. I'm trying to remember if Marvel did mini ash cans, uh, or what they did, but the other way that people talk about it is that, um, independent comic creators, people who are doing it on their own, uh, creators would often call their, their demo reel or their little, their comic that they made themselves, you know, by printing it on their own printers and then hand stapling it together. Um, they would, uh, they would call them, you know, ash cans, like, let me drop off my ash can. It was a fancy way of saying, let me drop off my portfolio. So that's what these things were. So, you know, small little comics that are basically, uh, you know, designed to kind of market or promote something. That's pretty much it. Uh, however, this term actually goes back a long way. So, you know, some people may think ash cans uh, were really something that came about in the late 80s. Um, and that's, that's uh, you know, that's their origin point. But ash cans actually date back to the 30s. And they were actually used for a really, um, you know, clear purpose. And that purpose was to lock in a trademark. So ash cans basically would get created by uh, comic companies as a way to very rapidly um, get characters or concepts or care, you know, th basically things down on paper, print it. And in many cases, these were not actually ever distributed to the, the public. Uh, they were, uh, they basically would, would kind of plant a flag, uh, to establish a character ownership. And, and, and that was it. And it, uh, it, they were, you, you know, they, it, it helped basically clean up some, some legal, uh, issues as basically, you know, what they were used. Fawcett Comics uh, used them quite a lot, uh, as well as others, to basically rapidly secure trademarks. Um, and it was it was viewed maybe in in you know today. Uh, this this may not be the best parallel that I'm about to draw for you, but today tech companies will often do patent phishing, where they will you know take take concepts and they'll try and uh, if they've got the money to do it. And there's a lot of startup tech companies that will you know, basically raise millions of dollars to do patent farming where they, they try and take a concept and they try and blanket, you know, every aspect of it with patents. And the goal is to try and cast a really wide net to the point that the bigger companies will be forced to kind of buy your patent for you. Um, it's, it's a little bit like that in the sense that the goal with the ash can was to very, very quickly get concepts out on paper. Somebody could point to them saying, see, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, this, this was, this was done. 
Um, sometimes there were no interior pages. Sometimes the, these truly were pamphlets. Uh, I know there's this whole narrative right now that, that current comics are pamphlets, but th this is, these are truly pamphlets. Sometimes ash cans would be, you know, two pages or one page basically quickly slapped together. And that was what the ash can was. And again, that, that was really all you needed in a lot of cases to get that, uh, to get that trademark. Um, DC was uh, was very heavy in using this. Uh, they were basically trying to secure a lot of titles, a lot of a lot of uh, trademarks, a lot of kind of character pieces, and it was a trick. Um, basically, you know, the the problem with all this is because um, it wasn't actually taken to market. It was absolutely skirting the rules of what patents and trademarks were all about. You'd produce this ash can, you'd produce it on the cheap, you'd make it look like a little comic that appeared real, but it wasn't actually delivered to market. You'd say, "Here you go. I, I will. I want to be awarded this trademark." And uh, people who are, you know, processing all this stuff, they're not comic readers. They have no idea this thing didn't go out to, to the shelves. And so they say, uh, okay, great. Um, here, the, clearly there's some ownership. I see that it was released and it, it wasn't. Now, in the arguments about this, um, it, it, you know, it, technically by the rules, you can't just uh, invent an idea and never release it to market and claim trademark for it. However, if you are going to the purpose of, of printing something and binding it and you've got it as part of a marketing or, or demo reel, technically that could be enough to qualify for a trademark uh, as opposed to actually printing it and trying to sell it out on the open market. It, it's, it, there's, there's, there's a gray area here, and it's in this gray area where a lot of ground was initially seized. Um, and it, because in some cases, you know, it was clear that the ash can was being made never with the intent to actually publish something. A lot of ash cans were created with these concepts that were, uh, attack based. So they, there was never really a, a goal to actually publish a comic. There would be, you know, people would sniff out a, a, a rival publisher's idea. They'd go back to their house. They'd rapidly kind of mock together this fake comic. They'd submit it for a trademark as a way to harm the competition, but they had no intention of actually publishing that comic themselves. Um, I think this came to a head. Although this is um, this is maybe some uh, this may be not real, uh, but there was a story at least that went around for a while that. Uh, a poor, or a, not a poor, but a, a non-comic company, somebody who wasn't even producing comics, uh, basically started uh, dumping a ton of these ash cans uh, out uh, into the market and, um, and, and kind of, you know, and, and basically tried to grab up a bunch of, of trademarks to attack DC. And this caused a, a lot of things to be thrown away. The trademark office started paying a little bit more attention and kind of the whole practice settled down a bit. And then, um, then of course, um, you know, it, it, uh, in the forties, early fifties, maybe forties, as I'm really going off memory here, I'm driving as you can hear. Um, then what basically happened is, uh, the trademark laws changed a bit that it, they kind of removed that gray area and said, if you had intent to publish something and intent, uh, doesn't mean certainty, then, you know, you could be awarded the trademark. So this idea of creating this kind of fake comic to kind of trick the clerk's office became irrelevant. There was, there's no need to do that anymore because uh, you, all you had to do was show intent. And so, you know, the, the ash cans went away. A lot of the, uh, the lawyer fees went away, the gray area went away, and then people just kind of went about, you know, to a more normal practice. But absolutely, uh, this was used, uh, this was a, this was a scam. That, that, that was basically being used. The idea was, hey, we can trick some people into thinking there's an actual comic here and we can use it to batter our competition. And, and they did. And there were many examples of this where, uh, you know, there, there was a lot of defensive warfare. I, in theory, lawyers made a lot of money. It's all part of the wonderful history of comics throughout the 30s and 40s, an era that we don't really talk much about, but was filled with a lot of just banana stuff of <laughs> people doing things to each other. This was one of them. So that is the origin behind ash cans. That's, that's how they came about. That's why they were used. And that's where, uh, that's why when you see them today and somebody's like, hey, check out my ash can. Um, it's rooted in basically a, a scam <laughs> play by publishers who were trying to trick people into thinking there was an actual comic when there wasn't. I, I like the fact that the term has kind of been reclaimed and uh, it you know it can be used as as marketing, uh, which is what's used for today. I I feel like in the in the world where we're just kind of nosing up to publishing uh, and digital in general, 
uh, the idea that we're going to see a resurgence of the ash can seems seems low. Uh, the it's just it's it's unlikely that we're going to see much of that. And there's just there's better ways to kind of submit your portfolio and put things together. That said, I will say if you're a, a creator who's trying to get into comics, the practice of taking your work to completion, even if it means you're printing it off in your home and stapling it together yourself. The, the, the practice of doing that, the habit of doing that is still really good and healthy for you. And if you want to make comics, I, I recommend you do that because it just it kind of teaches you the end to end process. Even if it's not all real, you still, you know, mentally kind of understand the steps. And I think that's helpful. But anyway, uh, that's that's what an ash can is. So there you go. It is not it does not have to do with smoking. Um, but I'm still very I, I don't know. It gave me a nice little chuckle. Um, please don't feel offended if you know. If you're listening to this, uh, you, the, the gentleman who sent me the question, um, I, I, I mean no disrespect. Uh, it, was a, it was a good question and an interesting one. It got me, I, I was able to do this video and I, I, love, I love this kind of crazy, wacky history stuff. So thank you very much for the question. And, and also, no, you, you warm my heart a little bit with the, uh, you know, does it have to do with smoking uh, part of, of your question? That's, that's cool. I, I like it. There's something charming about that. Anyway, do you have any questions, any other pieces you'd like to add to this story? Uh, there's a lot of very specific examples that get pretty funny. And maybe I'll put that in the, like, the comic rivalries because there's some, there's some anger uh, that erupted over you know, this kind of uh, attack process that would go on that is pretty hilarious, actually. <laughs> you know, grown men fighting each other. It's, it's always funny. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Uh, contact me if you have your own questions. I'll be happy to answer them. And thanks for listening.